Yo, what's up? Welcome to my another Ableton Only tutorial where we will work with the Ableton Wavetable Synthesizer. Today I will teach you making a funky bassline and style of voice noise. To be precise, we are talking here about the T-Tune track. I will teach you how to set up all the oscillators, envelopes and filters to achieve a desired effect, a desired bass sound. Later, I will show you how to use a simple chorus device to make your bassline sound very, very smooth. Later, I will explain to you why you should almost put your bass sound mono if you want to get a narrow, focused and deep sound. In the end, we will use lots of equalization to bring only the best out of our bass sound. If you are just getting started with electronic music production, and you have just downloaded your Ableton Live trial version, this video is definitely for you, so please keep watching. Knowing some of the sound design fundamentals is going to get you much further than just dragging a copied presets or ready samples onto the playlist. My name is Marcin, I put out sound design tutorials every second Sunday. If you don't want to miss these videos, subscribe to my channel. On top of that, if my YouTube channel is not enough for you, contact me for private music production lessons, which will give you a whole lot of new knowledge. Are you ready? Let's start the work. As always, I will start the recreation with inserting a new MIDI track, where I'm going to throw the wavetable synthesizer. The default patch for this synthesizer is loaded with a sine wave, we will change the sound of the synthesizer later, but at first I want to create a melody, so I will insert a new MIDI clip, which I drag towards the arrangement tab. I will use mainly A sharp and B notes. In the same manner, I will draw the rest of the melody. Some of the notes in the MIDI clip were overlapping with each other. It caused a weird facing issue, a weird modulation, which is unpleasant and we want to fix this. Notice that whenever I depress the key, the sound continues to play. That's because the release is set to 600 milliseconds. If I remove the release and set it to 1 millisecond, the sound stops playing immediately. I will play the MIDI clip again. Now the sounds from the notes are not overlapping. I want to create a more rhythmic sound and to do this I will adjust both the decay and sustain controls. After the bass reaches its full volume, for the first time it happens after the attack phase, the volume is going to drop to the sustain value in time set by decay. If I set the sustain to minus infinity and adjust the decay to one second, it means that after the attack phase, it will take one second for the sound to disappear. To create a more bouncy and rhythmic sound, I'm going to adjust the volume envelope now. You can hear some weird clicks uh, during the beginning or the end in the notes. To remove them, we have to slightly increase both the attack or release controls if needed. Now we can take care of the oscillators. The Ableton wavetable has two different oscillators in which you load different wavetables. You can treat these wavetables as a set of individual sounds or waveforms. We will use the classic approach which uses the basic shapes waveform containing four basic sounds. If we want to get more complex sound out of this simple waveform, we will use the warp-in. Let's adjust first the wavetable position control, which moves between these four basic shapes.
You get a different sound out of this patch. Now I will reach for the warping section. We have three different warping modes available. I will use today the modern one where we have two different controls allowing us to morph the sound. The warp control will behave similarly as the pulse width modulation which is used in lots of analog synthesizers. The fault control which we will not use today is much crazier with extreme values. We are going to add a lot a lot of new frequencies and harmonics to the sound. At this point we want to engage the filter to modulate the cutoff frequency which is a classic trick in sound design. We will use another envelope to modulate this frequency, this cut of frequency. Let's head to the matrix tab where you can assign the modulation sources, so the envelopes and LFOs, to its various destinations. I want to modulate the cut of frequency and I will use another envelope to control this. Simply drag the mouse in the right square to assign the modulation. We can go back to the envelope 2 to adjust it. We want to go much lower with the filter modulation. I'm going to decrease the sustain control for that. The frequency cut off takes too little time. I will increase the decay value. Now if you want to start from a higher frequency with the frequency sweep, increase even more the envelope to influence over the filter one frequency. To adjust the filter behavior, we can increase the slope of the filter curve. With a higher slope, the filter is going to cut the high end, the frequencies, in a much more aggressive way. Another control which can increase the aggressiveness of the filter is the resonance. It's going to create a bump around the cut of frequency, which can give you a crazy effect. I'm going to adjust now both the envelope to controls and the filter settings, because the way how the frequencies are cut is very important. At last we will head to the unison section which allows us to produce more than a single wave out of a single oscillator. Each wave is going to have a slightly different pitch which causes a cool smooth sound. We can choose between a few unison spread modes and these modes dictate how the uh, difference in pitch for each extra sound is adjusted. We will use the classic uh, unison or spread mode. Now we can control the voices amount and this tells how many sounds, how many waves are going to get out of a single oscillator. The difference in pitch is set with the amount control. Let's play around a bit with these controls now. The key for getting a smooth sound is the right adjustment of both voices and amount controls. This would be everything regarding the setup of Ableton Wavetable. If you like this video so far, please hit the thumbs up button so I can get with this video to more people like you who want to learn 
uh, basics of sound design and music production. Now we will use some extra effects on this bass sound. At first, we will use this chorus to make our bass sound smooth. The chorus copies a signal and that copy is delayed by a small amount of milliseconds. And later, this delay time is modulated with an LFO. The rate control is going to dictate that LFO rate, LFO modulation speed, and the amount control, uh, you can treat it as a modulation range for that delay time. The more amount, the crazier the sound gets. The feedback control allows you to route back some of the output back into the input of chorus, which can give another tone to the sound. There is a second mode of chorus available here, the ensemble, which instead of two copies has three copies, which make the sound even smoother. I will use the classic mode, which sounds a bit more audible, and now I will adjust all these controls. The dry wet knob blends the processed signal with the unprocessed one. If set to zero, the chorus takes no place. I will sell you a mixing tip now. The chorus creates a modulation across the whole sound, which means that all the frequencies in this sound are going to get modulated with a chorus. If if this chorus is applied to mid and high frequencies, we can get a smooth and interesting sound, but if the same modulation is applied to low frequencies, you might get your low end sound very messy and not precise. If the low end doesn't sound solid and narrow, your track is going to sound weak. The chorus in Ableton has an extra low pass, I mean high pass switch. With this one, you can tell the chorus to ignore the lower frequencies. Currently, this control is set to almost 800 Hz. It means that all frequencies about 800 Hz are going to get affected with a chorus. You have to pick a sweet spot with such a high pass filter if you tell the chorus to ignore too much of mid frequencies, uh, its effect is not going to be as fat as it could be. But on the other hand, if you tell the chorus to modulate too much of lower frequencies, as I said, your low end is going to suffer a bit. Let's compare the sound with and without it. Now we will reach for the utility, where I will make this bass sound more narrow. We can use the width control to make the bass sound wider or more narrow. If a bass sound is more narrow, it's going to sound more focused and solid. That's also because the low end by itself is going to get narrow and solid. Wider bass sound tends to sound bigger and let's say more powerful, but in the end uh, it's a matter of your own taste and the type of sound you are creating. Because some of the bass sounds sound much better when they are wider than narrower. In case of this sound, I want to make this bass sound more narrow to make it more solid.
The last step towards finishing this bass sound is the equalization. The equalization allows you to uh, make some frequencies in this sound louder or quieter. This is another way to influence how the bass line is going to sound. As an example, the most common thing when equalizing the bass line is cutting the MADI frequencies which make the bass line sound not so clean. These MADI frequencies usually sit around 200Hz region. It's important to keep some of these frequencies, but most of the times, at least from my experience, I make quite deep cuts in this region to make my bass sound cleaner. Besides the multi frequencies, you can meet some resonating frequencies which sound unpleasant and distract from the main uh, fundamental bass sound. If your bass needs to be fatter, you might want to boost some of the lowest frequencies. During this EQ I want to make this bass sound a bit lighter, that's why instead of boosting the low end, I'm going to cut it with a steep high pass filter. I'm also going to reduce some of the MADI frequencies. I told you about some resonating frequencies. To cut them, we want to be very precise and to create a very precise cut. Uh, Increase the Q control, which tells the filter bandwidth. Now we have to listen and sweep the frequency knob to find the resonance and cut it. In such a manner, you want to equalize your bass sound because it's going to take some time, I will copy now the equalizer settings I have made before. As you can see, there are here lots of precise cuts and some small boosts along the way. It's time for another tip. The bass after equalization sounds cleaner, but also you may think it sounds weaker because it is much quieter. To judge whether the equalization you make is going the good or right thing, use the gain control uh, at the right bottom section of the equalizer. This gain control is going to compensate for the volume change caused by the equalization. Now it's time for another trick. To fill this bass sound even more, we are going to add another sound which will go into complement this bass. In music production it's simply called layering. Let's put another MIDI track and copy the MIDI melody onto this track. Instead of a Ableton wavetable synthesizer, now I will use the analog one. This synthesizer is much much simpler. In this synthesizer, we will create a simple white noise. So far, these both oscillators are loaded with sort of waves. Let's turn off the oscillator 2 and leave the oscillator 1 where we pick the white noise. In the amp and filter sections, we want to set these both envelopes in the same way as we did with the Ableton wavetable. I'm going to literally copy all the envelope values straight to the Ableton analog. Both amplitude envelope and the filter envelope 
has the same settings as the envelopes in the Ableton wavetable. The oscillator one is already routed to the first filter which has that low pass filter. I will crank up the frequency knob for a second so you can hear how these envelopes work like. We don't need such a bright sound, that's why I will bring back the frequency knob down, which is going to make the envelope, the filter envelope, start cutting frequencies from a lower point. And this would be everything in the analog. We went a bit fast over it, but the settings here are the same as in the Ableton wavetable. The oscillator one is set to a white noise, this is the most important thing. This oscillator is routed here fully to the first filter and the settings of the filter are the same as in the wavetable. We have adjusted the filter envelope and we have adjusted the modulation range by both the frequency knob and the sustain value in this envelope. In the end, the amplitude envelope, which tells the volume of the noise, has been adjusted as well. To layer this noise with our bass sound, we have used the volume uh, control at the right section of this synthesizer. Before we add this noise to the bass line, we want to use an equalizer again. We want to cut again the low end out of this white noise so the low end of the final sound stays intact. Instead of the EQ8 in Ableton, I will use the auto filter. In the auto filter, I will change the filter type to a high pass filter and I will adjust the frequency control. fine-tune this sound, we only have to adjust the volume control. This is what layering is about. We are using some extra sounds to complement our primary one. In this case, the baseline from the Ableton wavetable. This would be everything for today's video. In the next two weeks, we will come back with the Klankenstler Hard Techno. We have created our lead sound from the Welschmetz track. We have also added the kick drum and baseline. In next two weeks, we will add the hi-hats as well to complement the beat. So far, thanks for watching and see you next time.